you mentioned the person who has eating disorders mm -hmm. and uh, you know that very nice sense of uh, saying that this is a, a moment where this person has a chance to actually see what is it you know to sit with her urges and yeah. to see what the urges are for and so yeah. it very clearly it, it seems like it's very related to the therapy you're doing with her mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time giving her a tool uh, in order to to have something to do, uh, yes. to not, you know, when the urges come, you have nothing else to do, then it makes it even easier to, to just fall into the urges. But this is a moment to literally, it feels like getting a grip uh, where there is some support. Yes, for stopping. exactly. Is that right. kind of, yeah. Yes, exactly. It, it, it is. It's kind of like a, like a security net, you know, yeah. something that I can use to, um, you know, they have in, in, in the AA groups, they have the sponsors, right? You know, mm -hmm. if, I, if I get the urge to drink, I'll call my sponsor and, and he or she will, you know, kind of talk me through it. And, you know, of course, in, in this context, I, I kind of felt like she didn't have that support because she's not a member of a support group outside of therapy. And so, you know, in that one and a half hours that we spend together a week in therapy, yes, a lot of work does get done. But at the same moment, you know, what does she have to continue? Continue to practice that. It, she was always talking about the challenges of it's so hard for me to bring myself back to body mm -hmm. so that I can sit with the urge. And so just having that very tangible thing for her was helpful in that, you know, sometimes she has the ball in her hand and she still goes and eats. <laughs> but but yeah. the thing is that is that sometimes she doesn't. Yeah. And and so she's able to, um, you know, not talk herself out of, you know, not to have that narrative of, oh, I got the ball in my hand. It doesn't mean anything. I'm just going to leave it and, and go eat. Um, it's more of a, yes, I feel centered. I feel in my body. Uh, it's so hard to be in my body. It's not what I'm used to, but I feel safer because I have more choices. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. kind of the, the way that that she describes it, yeah. So, so in other words, what I'm hearing there is that uh, holding the ball uh, becomes an embodiment of physicality uh, uh, of, of the possibility of making choices. Precisely, yes. And the possibility of making choices doesn't mean she always will do the right choice, far from that. Yes. But, you know, what we're talking about is that she's more conscious of the possibility of taking a moment to explore that choice and not do it in an abstract way but literally sitting with her urges absolutely yes that's exactly right yeah. yeah so it's interesting because in a way part of the questions mm -hmm. to in 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 doing this is to say you know how do you evaluate what happens and mm -hmm. so uh the criteria of eval evaluating what happens is not necessarily oh and you know therefore when she does it she doesn't eat but the criteria is she has that moment and yes. that moment is a step toward recovery. Right, yes, because that moment is really the awareness moment for mm -hmm. her. And I think that's the part where she's able to make a more conscious decision versus the autopilot move of, you know, going to eat. She's aware that, well, I now have the choice either to eat or not to eat. What is it that I really want to do? Um, well, let me get in touch with myself and see what this is really about. And I think that... Uh, the awareness piece is what was missing before. So, and, and this is something that I always say to her, you know, this is not about the eating disorder mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's not really the eating disorder that we're working with. But what we are actually working with is the awareness piece, which is what was missing. Mm -hmm. and so in all of the different awareness building activities or, you know, efforts that she makes, including, you know, using active pause both in therapy and outside of it, um, she has been able to become more sensitized to her somatic experience versus not being sensitized to it before and just doing that, you know, sort of automatic flight that, that she has been accustomed to doing her entire life. Yeah, yeah. But it seems also, in addition, that the context in which you're doing it, you know, by saying it's not about the eating disorder per se, you know, or about eating or, you know, just that, mm -hmm. that um, uh, you're making it okay to have the lapses so that it's not about a failure if she doesn't, and then she can tolerate 
you know, the experience of having that choice. Yes. Um, I mean, am I correct about that? That it's, yes. it's yeah. Yes, absolutely. And we actually did have this conversation about, you know, no matter which choice you make, at that moment, that was the right choice for you. So, um, because that is one of her fears, you know, the fear of being imperfect and the fear of failing. And, and that's kind of, uh, you know, the, this, it's played out in that eating disorder. All of that fear is being played out. And so, in the understanding that, you know, even if I make the choice to go ahead and eat, and it's okay. I can give myself permission to do that at that moment because at that moment that is what felt right. And it's not really about uh, the fact that I didn't have a choice at that point. It's just about the fact that, well, I did make that choice at that point. And maybe there was a moment of a lapse of awareness in the moment that I made that choice or maybe there wasn't. But really it's not about um, in the end removing the eating disorder it's about becoming aware of you know what what can i do with what i have with right. my resources that i have right now right so right. and then what can i do to bring myself into recognition of those resources mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and so so we're staying on this a bit because it's very different from saying say that what the you know doing active pause would be a way to cure eating disorders and right. what you're doing is to say well the goal that you have is actually to empower her to the idea that uh, she has the possibility of making decisions and that you know making decisions entails making wrong decisions quote unquote some of the time uh, in order to figure out what works for her um, and giving her the space emotional physical mental uh, you know spiritual to 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 create the moment of the possibility of making decisions Yes, that's exactly right, and and it's very interesting that you mentioned that because it's it was almost like the, um, you know, the permission had to come externally mm -hmm. first before she could allow herself to, uh, you know, drop into those moments of I, I was not able to I still followed my urge and to be okay with that uh, because in the first instances of doing that oh well it's not working you know there's that narrative of it's not working um, it's not gonna work I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get fixed you know that was sort of the thing and so it was very important to go through an understanding of well it's not really about you know what the outcome is gonna look like in the end it's just about you working your way toward you becoming more fully embodied so that you can create for yourself a new understanding of what you want to look like, not physically in the end, but what you want to be, you know, how you want to experience life, um, you know, versus this, you know, narrative that you're holding now that someone else has kind of been feeding into your entire life, mm -hmm. which is not really yours. So, um, so yeah, it's, it is really now not about the eating disorder because there are a bunch of other things that are going on besides the eating disorder and you know it it kind it's kind of interesting what she describes it now as well it seems like as one part starts to function other parts start to function too and so you know as my my uh, my eating becomes a little bit more manageable. Um, my dissociation also is more manageable. My anxiety is more manageable. My fear is more manageable. So there are a whole cluster of other things that are going on besides the eating disorder. And for me, it was the idea that if I want to only work at, you know, curing, so to speak, the eating disorder, then we're not really working at helping her to um, become more aware of her body so that whatever issues come up for her in the future too, she's able to deal with them. Right. She's able to, you know, tap into herself and say, I recognize that I have resources and that I can use them. My body is a resource mm -hmm. uh, because really her body was the enemy at first. And so, you know, now as she's creating this new relationship with her body, her body is not the enemy anymore. So no. it's about, you know, these are the things that I can use to bring myself back to this place where I can resource myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so essentially, in a way, she lived life in a cramped way. Yes. Because of pressures, because of blame, because of, uh, you know, all of these things. And this has been about, I don't mean just active pause, but the treatment, you mm -hmm. know, has been about giving her more space um, yeah. to 
make choices, but also to hear herself, to, to kind of figure out, but literally space to grow and to, to have room to exist. Yes, yes, and to grow, you know, fully into herself yeah. versus, you know, just, um, uh, the, you know, there's there's a very big element to, uh, you know, just um, what people expect her to look like. They're, the whole body image thing is very, very big for her, and, and it also plays into other parts of her life, who she should be, what kind of career she should have, what should I be doing right at this very moment. Mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. all of shoulds there, uh, which are kind of slowly dropping away as she um, becomes all the more aware of herself and then starts to recognize what her real needs are mm -hmm. and her real wants. So um, one of the very interesting things about active pause was that because it's very physical, you know, it, it's very, very tangible and, and tactile, when she first started using it, it was she didn't want to do that squeezing applying pressure you know she would just kind of hold it and just kind of let it float on her hand and it was almost like there was an aversion to it you know like I don't even want to do this um, because you know, oh god forbid that I should get in touch <laughs> with, with my sensations right so so it was just very interesting to observe that and and so it, it took her a, a couple of sessions to just sort of even tap into um, you know, just what is the sensation of just even holding the ball on the palm of your hand and what does that feel like and what does it bring up for you? And, and then as the squeezing began, it was almost like there was a sense of empowerment even in that, you know, like, oh, I can shape this, I can change this, I can make this move the way I want it to. You know, when I apply pressure, it, it moves with me. When I don't, it stops. So I'm the one who's doing yeah, Who's yeah. Take action. Yeah. yeah. So, so what you're describing is, in a way, a sense of uh, there's a relationality with the ball itself, you know, like an object. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the same time as she's experiencing the relationality with the ball, she's experiencing the relationality with herself in a way of what happens inside her when she does something. Uh, yes. So that's a, a moment where she's able to experience what it's like uh, to do different things yes. in relation to something else or to some right. other object. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. And, and it's been very helpful for her because she, um, she was always very flighty. Uh, you know, before using this, especially this, you know, act of pause because it is that tactile for her. Um, she was always very flighty and so out of touch with herself, but uh, this has given her something to say, I can feel. Mm -hmm. I can actually feel. Um, I can sense with my body and I can feel. And I mean, what a beautiful thing for her, you know, because uh, she's in touch with that part of herself that she has never really been in touch with mm -hmm, before. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and again, uh, uh, in what you described, is that because it was so difficult for her to be in touch and to feel, uh, you know, it worked that you allowed her, that you didn't press her to say, oh, the way to do it is to tighten, to have a grip. But mm -hmm. yeah, you play, you experiment, she was touching it. And then little by little, you know, she developed a relationship with it that allowed her to find the feeling as opposed to forcing there's a right way or wrong way to do it. Right, right, yeah, and so yes, with that too comes that uh, sort of dropping of judgment, which is also one of you know her 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 issues mm -hmm. uh, that you know I'm being judged that there is a wrong or right way to do this, there is a perfect or imperfect way to do it, and and this kind of um, it is sort of like a, a a modeling experience for her to understand that no, there doesn't necessarily have to be a wrong or right way to do it. There's a, I'm pacing myself way to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, so that's been the thing, you know, just pace yourself when you feel uncomfortable, um, you know, just check in with yourself, see what that discomfort is about. And if you absolutely can't stand it, then, you know, by all means, put it down. And so just that, that very um, sense of, again, empowerment for her, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to make the choice of, oh, okay, if I don't want to hold this, I don't have to, mm -hmm. you know, Naveen is not going to make me do this. Um, I, can't, I won't make myself do it. 
So, and, and then, you know, now to just be able to sit with that and be with it and to, um, to use it as a way to recenter and, you know, reground herself and, uh, to say, hey, you know what? I, I know what this hunger is about. Um, it, it's not about food, so I, I don't need to eat right now. Or, you know, to say, hey, I'm just going to blow it. I'm going <laughs> to go eat anyway. <laughs> yeah.